Chapter 16, Buoyed. Dear Miss Julia Child, Google just told me that you are no longer alive, but I had it in my mind to write you a thank you, and so I'm going to do it anyway, because I need something to do with my hands. I'm writing to thank you for your recipe for pie crust. I found it in my mom's copy of Mastering the Art of French Cooking. At first, my grandma said French cooking was too snooty, but when she found out it had shortening in it, she said, anything that uses Crisco is okay by me. Somebody close to me told me that if I was going to make a prize-winning pie, I had to pick something that spoke to me. The problem is a lot of things speak to me. I like fancy French food, and I also like biscuits and gravy, and chocolate-dipped cones from Dairy Queen, and miniature golf and Sudoku, thanks to my grandma. So I decided to make a pie that would speak to every part of me. I used your crust because it's nice and sweet and a little fancy, and I used blackberries my grandma and I picked from her garden and canned last summer because it's still spring here, and I thought people would like a taste of what's ahead. And I glazed it all in lemon because lemon is my grandpa's favorite, and I wanted to make him smile. So I guess this is a letter to my family, too, for helping me make the best blackberry lemon pie in the whole of you, Paula. I can say that for real because I have a blue ribbon and a $100 grocery certificate to prove it. Many thanks, Ellie. It's too dark in this room. I don't know why it, it always has to be too dark or too bright or too cold or too hot, but I guess you don't come to the hospital for a good night's sleep. Mom and Mima are down in the family room meeting with the doctors. I told them I'd keep an eye on Grandpa. Not that he's going anywhere. I can hear his breathing steady and calm, and that makes me calm. I've never been in this position before, the visitor in the hospital. After we got to the ER, the paramedics said I was a hero. They said if I hadn't busted open that garage door, it could have been much worse. They didn't say worse how. They didn't need to. I lay my head on Grandpa's knee and shut my eyes. My hands itch where the nurse bandaged up the cuts. It feels like a lifetime and a day since baking in the kitchen this morning with Coralie. I feel a hand on my head. Hey, stop that crying now. Grandpa! I sit up and grab his hand with my own. It's purple and veiny, and I'm careful not to touch the IV. You're supposed to be resting. Well, I think this counts. He coughs and smiles. Hey now, I said no crying. I'm going to be okay. And he looks okay. A little pale, maybe, and his voice is hoarse. Otherwise, he looks normal. But I can't help thinking, that's the problem, isn't it? He always looks normal. I squeeze his hand. What's my name? What? He looks confused for a second, and I hate it, but I have to ask. Just what's my name? Dolly Parton? That's not funny. Honey, I know you're Ellie, but I don't blame you. He coughs, and I scoot closer. Grandpa, why'd you run off like that? Well, it's kind of a funny story, he says, and laughs, but I can't. I went to check on the contest, like I told you. Then when I got in there and saw all the trinkets at the silent auction, I remembered I'd left my own at home, the woodworking I'd been doing. I thought I'd just drive on home to fetch it. He stops talking, and I think that's the end of it, and I want to ask, why? Why did you park in the garage? Why did you shut the door? Why didn't you turn the car off? But he's rubbing his eyes, and there's a little blood on his hand from where they had to stick him twice with the needle for the IV. So I decide to leave it for now. I'm about to push the button for the nurse when he says, Ellie, I guess I just got a little confused, is all. Oh, Grandpa. Ellie, I know I'm not right some of the time. He picks at some dirt under his thumbnail like a little kid. But most of the time I am. Honey, and that's just a hard line to walk. They're talking about making you live somewhere else. I didn't mean to say it, didn't mean to tattle, but he doesn't look surprised. I know, baby, your grandma and I have been discussing it, but I don't want you to leave. I yell so loud a nurse comes by and shushes me and then sees grandpa's awake and goes off to fetch a doctor. Honey, it's not like they're dumping me at a street corner and going on their merry way. Some of the places we've looked at are mighty fine, nicer than our trailer, that's for sure, and your grandma would come with me. We'd even get a little space to do some gardening. I like our trailer. I know you do. And then I pull out my blue ribbon and hand it to him. Evelyn drove by the hospital just to give it to me. He holds it up to the light like he's looking at a gemstone. Well, I'll be first place and a hundred dollars to boot. That's my girl. He's closing his eyes now and I think I ought to let him rest. But I want to ask one last thing. Grandpa, 
What, honey? What'd you go back for? For the auction, I mean. What'd you make? He opens his eyes and looks at me. It was a mailbox in the shape of a pie. I guess I had you on my mind. Before we leave that night, I tape the ribbon to the foot of his bed so he'll see it first thing when he wakes up and remember. One day during the summer, when I was nine, Grandpa had been promising me all morning we'd go fishing. It would be the first time out on the boat that season. It was 90 degrees at noon, but I was in my chair waiting by the van right after lunch. Honey, you don't have to wear that life vest until we hit the water, he said, as we backed down the drive. I know. I left it on because how can you explain to a grown-up how it feels to be so close to the thing you've been waiting for? But when we got to the dock and were backing the boat down into the water, the clouds swooped in with a flash summer storm. It was thundering and dark as night, and we had to turn around. I cried all the way home. I was sitting in my chair watching reruns of the magic school bus when Meemaw came in. She was holding out an umbrella. Your grandpa's got a surprise for you. I didn't want to go, but she wheeled me out into the rain anyway and down the gravel driveway to the carport next to the garage. Grandpa was standing by an old trash can, and flames rose up out of it and licked the sides. Without a word, he passed me a coat hanger he'd unbent and helped me stick a hot dog on the end of it. His apron said, World's Worst Chef. We sat out there all afternoon roasting hot dogs and playing cards while the yard filled with puddles. And Mom and Mima watched from the porch. Sometimes, Grandpa said when it finally stopped raining and the sun came out, the best plan is the one you don't make for yourself. Dear Dad, I can't believe you got me the cookie scooper. I know it's not super fancy and doesn't look like much, but I have made a million cookies a million times faster, and it's so awesome, so thank you. And yes, when you come to visit this summer, I promise to make the oatmeal raisin cookies. Ellie. June in Oklahoma is like living on the sun, or at least that's what it feels like in the bed of a pickup as it bounces down the road to number nine landing. You know we get arrested for this in Nashville, I yell through the open window into the cab of the truck. I'm in the back with Bert and Coralie in a nest of life vests and inner tubes. Good thing we moved then, Mom yells back. Coralie laughs and slaps Bert on the back so hard he drops his phone. What in the world has gotten into your mother, she shouts towards me her hair whipping free from her ponytail. I shrug and look up at mom. Her sunglasses are pushed into her hair, which is crazier looking than ever now that she's growing it out again. Hutch follows us in the van with my chair and enough Gatorade and chips and watermelon to last us all summer. It's not even 10 in the morning when we get to the lake and we have it all to ourselves. Hutch puts me in my chair in the shade while everybody unloads. The sky is wavy with heat and I'm sticky with sweat. I lift my thighs up from where there's a suction to the chair. It's perfect. All right. Mom kneels down in front of me and rubs a fifth coat of sunscreen onto my shoulders. Are you sure about this? Mom? Ellie? If you back out now, I will fire you. I will fire you as my mother. Well, good luck to you then, she says and starts to get up. Come on. I can see Coralie and Bert standing with their feet already in the water. Okay, okay. Just promise you me you'll be careful. Okay, yes, I promise. She wheels me over the wet sand right up to the edge of the lake. Hutch is waiting there, and he bends down and tightens the straps on my life jacket and the floaties on my arms and legs. Ready, Ellie, he says. Ready. And then he lifts me out of the chair and walks into the water. The lake's still cool this early in the summer, and my skin is so hot that the shock of it gives me goosebumps. Once we're deep enough, he lowers me all the way in, and I lie back with my arms out. Coralie and Bert swim up to me on either side. Coralie's hair is so bright in the sun, it looks white, and Bert is pale as a ghost in the muddy water. Okay, you can let go now. Are you sure? Hutch, let go. After a second, he does, and I let the water take me. My body floats weightless. Each part is steady and strong as the rest. I kick a little with my foot and practice moving one leg and then the other, until I am moving out farther from the shore. I lift my head and see Mom standing with her hands on her hips. I wave. She waves back. When I reach the buoys that separate the swimming area from the rest of the lake, I see they are orange and faded in the sun. I grab onto one, and Bert and Coralie each take another. A fish swims by and brushes up against my leg, and then it much reach Coralie's because she screams, and we're all laughing and the sun isn't so hot now. Mom and I are going over to Grandpa and Meemaw's condo for supper. I've promised to bring dessert. 
They're at autumn leaves now. There's a fitness center and an indoor swimming pool and a community garden and poker night. And I think they might like it better than the trailer, which is okay because the trailer is ours now and they can still come visit all the time. And once mom gets settled into her permanent teaching job at the high school, she promises a full renovation with a handicap shower. The pie mailbox is already up. After a few minutes, I turn around and close my eyes and let go of the buoy and drift. Wherever you want to take me, I think as the waves pull me along. I hear Coralie yelling, Hey, wait for us! But my ears are underwater, and it comes to me gently. I am floating.